Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Heart for the Community Initiatives 2022 Black Business Spotlight. This is episode four, I believe. Uh, I'm, I'm doing so many of them now. I, I can't get them all together. I think this is episode four. Uh, just look at the title. It'll tell you. We're so glad to be back with you. For those of you who don't know, I am Carl Armstrong. I am director of operations for Heart for the Community Initiative, and I am the host of the Black Business Spotlight for 2022. This is our second annual year that we've done that this during Black History Month. And our purpose is to let you know about the black owned businesses in the DMV area. That's our region. But we got some folks down from the place where I'm from. Uh, the last episode we had our me uh, down in the 757. And tonight we have our me's first cousin, Kim, who is my sister. All right. And uh, she's uh, from the 757 also. So we are giving these uh, Virginia State people, uh, these business owners, these tremendous entrepreneurs, giving them uh, some some information, excuse me, an opportunity to tell you something about their business. And there's my lovely wife, Tisha Armstrong, saying good evening to everybody. We appreciate you, sweetie. And she's doing double duty because she's up there. She's hosting some folks and she's on the live. So I appreciate her. This is what I want you all to do who are in the live audience. We want as many eyeballs to be on this episode as we can. So I want you to begin to tag your friends and your family members, everybody who you think that you might want to know that you uh, are watching the Black Business Spotlight because we have some business owners here who have some products and services that you may want to know. Now, let me tell you, I know these three entrepreneurs. I know how they get down and they have something to say that you really, really, really going to want to hear. So begin to share the broadcast. And also, please begin to tag. I would certainly appreciate that. This evening, we have Jovita Miller of Jovita N. Miller Enterprises, LLC. We have Kimberly Case of Candle Creations. And we also have Shaquilla Hutchison of Z's Southern Kitchen. And we appreciate all of you. And there is my man, Robert Brinkor Smoot. A, a local business owner himself, and he's going to be with us in early March. Thank you, brother, for, for coming along with us. He probably doing a little homework to see how we get down so you know he can make the most out of his deal. We ain't mad at your brother. <laughs> Amen. So listen, this is what we're going to do, audience. We're going to have uh, our panel to introduce themselves and their businesses to you. I want you to know to please feel comfortable as we go along through this interview. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, you can put them in and we, we want you to be interactive in this show. So we're going to start with Jovita Miller. Jovita, please tell the audience about yourself and your business. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. It's been a, it's an honor to even be here once again. I had fun the last time and I'm sure I'm going to have fun this time. So hello, everyone. I am Javita Miller and I am the owner of Javita and Miller Enterprises LLC. It's a coaching and consulting business and we help um, boss women go from feeling frustrated, overwhelmed and alone to giving herself permission to heal and be free so that she can live a harmonious life. I also help her over overcome her unique challenges so that she can build and cultivate her network and her net worth so that she can increase her currency and just give herself just overall like permission to just be who she is, her true and authentic self. My overall mission is to empower women to live confident, authentic lives unapologetically. Again, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. All right, Jovita. Thank you. What a tremendous introduction. We really appreciate that. All right, Kimberly Case, please introduce yourself and your business to the audience. Please take yourself off of mute. There you go. That's better. Okay. Hello, my name is Kimberly Case. I am the owner of uh, Candle Creations by Kim. I've been in business since about 2018. I um I provide a service that will fill your home with bliss. I provide services that just it it just goes a long way. I make an excellent product and you definitely want to get a dose of it. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Kim. I'm sure we're gonna be exploring uh candle creations here in just a little bit. 
All oh, right, yeah. Miss Sha Shaquilla, introduce yourself and your and your business, please. Sure. Hi, my name is Shaquilla Hutchison. I am the owner, co-owner of Z Southern Kitchen, with along with my husband. I am the head chef of Z Southern Kitchen. We currently have a food truck and um, are working on our brick and mortar location, which would be located at 1169 Courthouse Road in Stafford. Um, I'm here to tell you all about my business and what we're doing. We have more than one business, of course. Um, we also have Hutchison Faithful Enterprises, where we're business consultants, instructors, and real estate investors. However, today we're going to focus on Z Southern Kitchen because we're opening up our brick and mortar. We want you to come out and taste what we're going to provide, which is comfort food, that good old soul food, that, that food that's just soothing to your soul. So here we are. All right. Thank you so much, ladies. Y'all did a tremendous job introducing uh, your, your businesses. And let me tell you, uh, Shaquilla, she is on the road, but she was not going to miss this opportunity to introduce herself and her business to you. So we're going to hang with her. I imagine she's somewhere on I-95. So <laughs> we, we're thanking God and for her and her presence and we want her to be safe. Now, this is what I want to know. But before we go, I saw that I had my brother from another mother, Bishop Timothy Branch. God bless you, man of God. He is the senior pastor of uh, Lord of the Harvest Ministries Incorporated here in Stafford, Virginia. And he is a supporter of Heart for the Community Initiative. And I just want to recognize him. Now, this is a question I'm going to ask to the panel. And whoever wants to jump on it first can jump on the question. Now, there are many other people that do what you do. That there's somebody else who does soul food. There's somebody else who does consultation. There's somebody else who makes these tremendous candles. And Kim, you're gonna have to tell them all about your candles now. You, you you're a little nervous, but I'm gonna have to help you out. So, what makes you different? Why should I? Why should the audience spend our money with you? When we come to you, what makes what you do, what you bring to the table? so different and so good to make us want to spend our hard-earned dollar with you and whoever wants to take that question first can take it you're still on mute sweetie there okay re regarding my product there's a lot of big names that sell candles one thing that my candle is different from everybody else is that i provide cbd I can add CBD into your candle. It helps you relax you, and it's not illegal. It also, it's just, it just fills up your room. I use all natural products. I use good products. So you're going to get an excellent product from me. What kind of uh, different scents do you have? Oh, I have a whole, I have 45 different fragrances. Oh my God. 45 different fragrances. Um, they are they are extraordinary. I've gotten nothing hurt, nothing but great things back from my customers, and I have returning customers. Men are my number one customers. What? Yes, yes, they love them. They get them for gifts for their mom, for their uh, for their wives, for their children. They're my number one customers, and they they I have continuing. They continue to return to me. All right, forty five different scents. And you can even get them in legal CBD. That's right. <laughs> All right. Jovita, Shaquilla, why should we spend our hard-earned money with you? I see you took yourself off of mute. Uh, Jovita, you go ahead. Okay. So I, um, I help my clients apply my shift methodology in, you know, solving their challenges, their problems, and whatever it is that they're going through to help them get started, like in writing, get started with their businesses, just get started anything that they wish to pursue. And my shift methodology just basically, you know, helps the my clients stand in their truth, honor themselves invest in themselves and they learn the importance of investing in themselves. They fall in love with themselves all over again and then they transform their entire lives. So my shift methodology is very unique and that's why people, you know, would pay to work with me because I can get them to that next level living. Wow. One quick question I want to ask you, Jovita, is there a specific area that you concentrate in in your consultation and coaching? Um, it's unique to each individual. But um, I mainly concentrate in building the and I 
focus on boss women, as you know, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I focus on kind of helping them build and create their network because what we fail to realize, especially my single moms, what we fail to realize is asking for help is a powerful thing. It's not a weakness. And I want to get that stigma about single moms, you know, that negative connotation about it. That's not what it is. That's not what it's all about. It's really about building yourself out and asking for help and just using the tools necessary so you can get the help you need to help raise your kids um be that boss woman that you want to be and just go out and pursue your dreams oh man boss ladies and i'm gonna <laughs> use that one i give you credit but i'm gonna use that one boss ladies well here's another boss lady miss shaquilla with z southern kitchen now what makes us want to spend that money with you sure can you hear me yes we can hear you awesome awesome well that that food that's all I can say. It's the food. It's it's what's going into that stomach. And it's not just the food itself, but it's the feeling of love, respect, and warmth that you get when you walk into our building and up to our food truck, knowing that we're going to comfort you, whether you have the funds to purchase what we have or not. Everybody's welcome. Everybody will eat. We have, we feel that we have what it takes to draw you in and keep you coming back for more. Because when you come to Z Southern Kitchen, it's not about individuals anymore. It's about family. And that's the environment we want to create, a family environment. Oh, man. Now, listen, I can vouch for Z Southern Kitchen. I can vouch for Candle Creations because I have uh, experienced the food. I have experienced the candles. And yes, they did help me sleep. Uh, I have not experienced Jovita's coaching, but I tell you one thing, she was here last year. She back this year. She made it. She doing all right. <laughs> so we certainly appreciate it. Now, this is what I want to know. Uh, of course, you know, listening to this program uh, this evening and even in the playback are going to be people who are still in the dream stage. Uh, you know, just like you were before you started your business. It was an idea. Uh, it became a passion at some point. And something just made you say, listen, I got to get off of the couch and get this thing going. So this is a two part question. I want to know what was the thing uh, that moved you from being a dreamer and just being passionate about it? That And that also that moved you into I'm going to start this business and also what keeps you in other than the money. But what is the thing that just you the thing that you love about what you do so much that, that keeps you want to do it? because you could be doing other things. Right but you choose to do this thing. And I'm going to start with you, Jovita, if you don't mind to answer that two-part question. Okay. Um, what got me started was my book. This really got me started um, into launching this, launching my business. Um, my book is called In Between the Sheets, Pulling Back the Covers to Enhance Your Sexual Experience. And in writing that book, I realized that we weren't having the conversations that we needed to have amongst women and just amongst people in general to, you know, enhance our sexual experiences. Women were feeling down and out and just the conversations I've been having with other folks, I just felt the need that we needed a platform for having these types of conversations. And that just started as, like I said, as just a book. And then it just grew into the coaching and consulting um, side of the house as well. I have products and services that helps you know, to enhance your sexual experience and not saying like the adult products. I mean, I have those too, but I'm just saying <laughs> in general, just other tools and um, resources to help you become a better you. And like I said before, you know, I utilize my shift methodology because once I feel as though once you are truly in love with yourself and who you are, then you will actually start to look out for yourself and be and do the things that you want to do. And all of that enhances your life, enhances your sexual experience. It just just enhances everything. And that's just what my goal is. And that's what drove me. Now, I got a specific question for you. OK. Now, some people would consider your book and your subject matter to be taboo. It and uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, you know, uh, what, what type of family you come from, what kind of church you grew up in. But I would imagine for some people, that kind of thing is a hurdle. What was it for you that made you say, well, you know, this is what I'm going to do because I, I think that it needs to happen. How did you get beyond whatever the hurdles were to go into that particular subject matter? Oh, yes, it was a hurdle. <laughs> it was definitely a hurdle. I was literally afraid to actually step out and do something like this. However, what made me go out and do it was I saw a need for just opening up 
the lines of communication, just to have the conversation. I know I, I don't have any problems having the conversation, but it took me a minute to get there. And yes, it's definitely taboo. I was afraid, but believe it or not, uh, when I brought this idea to my mom, ooh, when I brought it to my mother and she was like, oh, you are so right. We're not having these types of conversations. I was okay. I was done. I was like, this is where I need to go. This is what I need to do. But definitely, yes, it is taboo. It's, it was a hurdle. It's still a hurdle to this, this day because people aren't really um, going in depth into what the book is actually speaking about. You know, the title is catchy and it is about getting in between the sheets, but it's a lot deeper than what the title actually says. Wonderful. Well, before we go, I definitely want you to type the uh, title of that book uh, okay. into the uh, the chat so that we can put that up. That we want to um, help you get that out. OK, thank all you. right. Uh, Kim, I want to know from you what made you move into uh, move away from the dream stage into I got to get this thing going and what keeps you going. OK, so. I was just sitting at my desk at work one day and I decided that I needed a second stream of income. So I went on YouTube. I looked up a couple things. And once I looked up a couple things, I just said, I'm going to start my own candle line. I didn't know where I did. I had no idea how I was going to get it done, but I was going to get it done. So I start, you know, just looking into it and just trying to figure things out about it. And guess what? Two weeks later, I lost my job. I took my last paycheck from there and I spent half of it on candle supplies. And my first batch was just okay. Then I realized I'm going to have to double what I pay and I'm going to have to put better ingredients in here. And like I, ha I have a winner now. Oh, wow. That is amazing. And so for you, it was uh, intuition, I guess, and it came right at the right time because uh, you say two weeks after you started, you lost your job. Two weeks later, out of just out of nowhere, two weeks later. Wow. They were just I'm downsizing, sure. and I was I was the one. I was I was one out of a few, but I just knew it was something I had to do. I knew I was going to go back to work, but I also knew I needed to do something for myself. It's almost therapy for me. Nine and nine problems, candle creations ain't one. That's Got what I'm that talking right. about. <laughs> <laughs> Shaquilla, what made you go from the, the dream stage to the I'm going to start this business and what keeps you going? Well, I'm a risk taker. So quite naturally, can you? Um, it was just, you know, I, I needed to do something else. Um, I, I did a lot of things previously. I tell people all the time, I'm a jack of all trade, master of none, but I know a little bit about everything, just enough to be a dangerous. So my thought was I needed to do something. I was in the federal government um, as a contracting officer working sometimes, you know, 12, 14 hour days as the you know director. And I'm just like, you know what? There has to be more than to this. And I knew what I love to do. I knew what my passion was, but I was afraid. You know, they say fear always step in. Um, and so I was like, one day I went into work and I called my husband and I said, you know what? I'm, I'm tired. And what I did not expect him to say was, okay, quit. And I was like, quit, you know, I was like, but what, what am I going to do? Like, you know, what, what am I going to do? And so I started thinking, you know, your mind started going real fast and I'm like, okay, I got to process this. He said, quit. I never heard those words and oh, I'm going to quit. Right. So <laughs> I took the time. I jumped. I actually say this i got on the road i left work <laughs> i got on the road as i was driving um i was on the radio steve harvey came on the radio out of nowhere i don't i don't listen to you know most things and most time in i'm in the car gospel is playing so steve, steve harvey came on and he said well what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail and then he said well you know sometimes you're gonna jump and you're gonna hit those road bumps you're gonna you're gonna knock your head a little bit you're gonna fall over he said but the good thing about it is you always can get back up and try it again so i thought about it okay i love acquisitions i love contracting i love being in the federal government love my employees but what is it that shaquilla wanted to do and for years since i've been a little girl it was always i want to feed other individuals i want to feed into not just their stomach 
makes, but their hearts, their souls, their minds. I love giving. I love, how can I do what Shaquilla loves to do? Well, my favorite thing is cooking. So I found that with cooking, you bring conversation. People come together. They talk more. They, you know, it just opens up a lot of things. So here I am. I opened up Z's Southern Kitchen and it has been the best ever since. Wow, that is amazing. I really do thank y'all for sharing this information. Uh, this is good stuff. I'm sure it's speaking uh, to the dreamers um, and, and, and the things that you have to overcome, because I'm sure that all of you have experienced ups and downs in your business. And uh, so this is what I want to know. At what point does your side hustle become your main gig? And I'm asking that for anybody who wants to take it. At what point does your side hustle become your main gig? How do you know that this thing that maybe started as something I'm doing on the side until I can you know, get it to a certain point? How do you know when it's time to say, hey, this is what I'm doing? For me, it was day one. It was day one. I knew it was time for me to say, okay, I need to do something different. Yeah, I was shooting for eight streams, stream, seven streams of income, and now I'm on eight, you know? So my thought process was, you know what? Yeah, I got, it's a mindset. I got to change everything about me. If I want to be the boss, if I want to be the CEO, then I got to put my all into my passion. And so what I decided to do, you know what? I'm going to lay everything else to the side. I'm not letting anything go. Not right now, because everything else that I do feeds my passion. And now I see where my passion continues to grow because I put all into it. So for me, it was day one, change my mindset, refocus re-strategize and get it together, Shaquilla, because you don't have time to wait. What are you waiting for? Oh, wow. Amazing. Amazing. All right, ladies. Uh, Jovita, Kim, how did you know when your side hustle uh, becomes your main thing? I knew when my orders just kept coming in, like people love my product. I make a good product. One of my one of my aunts is the is the uh, one of my dad's sisters. Me and her had a really strong conversation. She was like, "Have you added up what you spend? Have you at have you at taken that from what you sell your candles for? Get it on paper. I don't want to see you again until you have it on paper to show me that you are making more money than you're spending." Um, and that that right there just let me know that this is business. She was like, "You sell an awesome product." She said, it's worth more than what you charge. She said, so get your paperwork together, uh, get your numbers together and come back and see me. And that's when I realized that this is what I'm going to do. Wow, that is amazing. How about you, Zorvita? So I actually, um, this is still my side hustle <laughs> uh, right. because I love what I do in my full-time job and I love this. So it's a balance of both worlds because I what I do on the side is also sort of what I do in my um, my current um, position at work. So it, it kind of intertwines. But however, like the you know the other ladies have said, it's a mindset thing because I'm learning more to just try to grow this a little bit more because I'm in a contract world. So you you just never know when you know that's going to be the end so i do want to like at least build it up to the point where you know if i have to or when i have to actually um step out and not you know do corporate anymore i'm ready and it's the foundation is set but i'm not there yet but i'm getting there but um i i think i believe that i will know exactly when it's time to walk away and right now it's just not time to walk away because they both are feeding each other Wow, that is good information. And like I said, I'm sure that there are dreamers, uh, people who haven't quite done it yet, or maybe they've stepped out, but uh, maybe, you know, had some some negative things happen and they kind of just, you know, need some motivation, uh, some information to do it. And now I'm going to ask you this. Now, people look at business owners and they see all the glitz and glamour, uh, but they don't see the hard work that goes into it behind the scenes. They see when a Z Southern kitchen truck is already powered and the grease is hot <laughs> and the food is churning, but they don't see what you had to do the night before to prep, right? And when you got up uh, at four o'clock in the morning to get everything out there and get started, same thing with you, Javita, uh, how much uh, study you had to do to be able to, to deal with these boss ladies, <laughs> right? And how many edits did you have to go through for that book 
Oh my God, you know, the, the courage to do it. And Kim, they don't know how many times you tried to make a batch uh, of, of candles. Who in the world, you know, uh, thinks of, man, I'll make some candles in the house. So what I want you to do, if you can, I want you to speak to those dreamers and, and, and kind of let them know some of the things that they don't see, some of the things behind closed doors, maybe some of the things that they need to know about going into business. Maybe if somebody could have told me X, Y, and Z, it would have made the path a little easier. And Shaquille, if you don't mind, I'll start with you with this. If you could talk to the dreamer, please. Sure. Um, I have to be honest. Uh, anything you want, <laughs> anything you do, it takes hard work, you know, um, consistency, just determination, putting yourself out there, being the backbone of your business, putting your face out there. I tell people all the time to not be afraid to do what is fearful, you know, what most people won't do. That hard work. Yeah. Like now I'm on the road to South Carolina to go check on my mom coming right back because I'm in the middle of construction. You know, I'm building my brick and mortar. It takes hard work. I sleep when I can. I know I remember my dad used to tell me all the time. He said, if you want something bad enough, you'll do what it takes to get it. And then you will think about sleeping and say, even when you're sleeping, your mind is still going to keep going. He said, but then also remember you. OK, there's a time when you got to shut off, you know, shut off and say, you know what? I need me time. I need to take a break. The fortunate thing about, you know, being an entrepreneur is that I've learned how to say, OK, this is it for me. Don't call me before 10 o'clock because I don't like to talk to people before 10 o'clock. Don't call <laughs> me after five o'clock and ask me about nothing about the business because you probably won't get me unless I'm inside the business. And then. You know, my thing is I check emails at a certain time. I answer phone calls at a certain time. I'm going to be honest. I cost. My time is money. If you want to talk to me about business, it comes with a consultation fee. For me, it is learning how to balance not only the business, it's balancing life. I have a family, have two girls in college. I have to consider all that. Plus, I still teach federal government employees. So for me, it was learning that you know what it's going to take hard work everything i got got i got to put into it but at the same time i got to put everything else in perspective and prioritize wow that's good information javita how about you <laughs> what, what could somebody have told you that now you can share with that person that's watching that would have made it a little easier for you basically like she said boundaries you know setting those boundaries and sticking to them consistency. Uh, I know for me, um, consistency was my hardest thing for me to stay consistent because my mind is all over the place and I get so overwhelmed so easily. So I had to learn how to set boundaries so that I don't get overwhelmed. I've learned how to actually know what my triggers are. And I think that's important because some people, we, we just don't know and we get to a state where we just, it's chaos and then we just shut down. So um, learning the boundaries and staying consistent in what I do, um, that has helped me. I wish someone told me that um, before getting started. People mentioned consistency, but they didn't really mention the boundaries. And just being a better manager of self, because we are, you know, people who have families, we have jobs, we're doing our side hustles, trying to build that, you know, and building different relationships as we go along the way. And of course, doing the training so that we can stay up to date in whatever field we choose. But we have to find, you know, manage our time well. And the calendar, my calendar is my friend. If you want to talk to me, you have to get on my calendar. Um, because that's the only way I am going to remember that I even said that I was going to have a conversation with you. It's funny because my sister does that. It, I didn't realize that I set that boundary with her and that she picked up on it because she was like, I need to get on your calendar. I'm about to schedule some time because I need you to help me with whatever it is. So setting boundaries, that was the main thing that really, really, um, I wish someone really had drove into me like just set these boundaries you have to do it and like Shaquilla said take time for myself because when you do get overwhelmed when I'm just drained I am no good to help anybody so I have to take time to retreat and just take care of myself and relax whatever it is I need to do and I set that in my week so during my week I have one day set aside that I do nothing I don't do no work I don't do no 
no planning. I don't do no research. I don't do no classes. I don't do anything that day. And that helps me stay grounded and keep my sanity in check. Oh, wow. That is great information. Thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Kim, uh, what do you wish somebody had told you? And, and can you give the audience a little behind the scenes of, you know, they, they see those beautiful candles when they arrive after you ship them. But there's a whole lot of things that you got to do to get that to happen. Woo! What I call it is in the lab. If I put on social media that I'm in the lab, get your orders in, because I might not go back in the lab for another week or two. Because when I go in the lab, I make 30 to 50 candles every time. So when you order what you want, I already have it. But I wish what a few times I think I may have burnt my fingerprints off with that hot wax. Let me tell you, <laughs> I have some injuries now. <laughs> <laughs> I um I think the main thing with me that I wish people would have told me is customers. It's not always easy dealing with people. People will love your product but not want to pay your price for it. Like this is not a this is not the Dollar Tree candle. Like I put a lot of effort, I put a lot of work, I put a lot of money into my my uh product and I want to give you a great product and in return I don't want to hear that I'm too expensive. I don't want to hear that it's just it's, it's it's just too expensive for me. It's too expensive for you, just you, you alone. Because let me tell you, customers will try to, they will try to bottom line you real quick and try to get their candle for $2. And that's just not going to happen with me because I've worked too hard and I put in too much effort and I pay too much money for what I put into the candles for it to be a great product. Hey, man, I, I really appreciate that. Listen, we have a question from the audience. Uh, young Miss Hutchinson wants to know what motivates you. And either one of y'all who wants to jump on that question, you can jump on. She says, what motivates you? Well, I can say um, initially when I started, what motivated me and my why was my son. Um, he was just um, going to college at that time. So it was like I was doing this. He was my motivator, my biggest supporter, and he was my why, my big reason why I wanted to do what I wanted to do, because um, just providing the life for him so that he can do what what he's doing now. But it was just he was my biggest motivator. I look at him. And I'm like, you got to keep going. You got to keep pushing. You got to live your dreams because you not only are you living for yourself, you are living for him. And then another thing that motivated me was just um just seeing the people like my friends and family and just seeing what they've been going through and how they, you know, want to do things, but didn't do things. And just actually seeing me actually step out on faith and doing a little bit of things, it encouraged them. And I've noticed that by me doing that, I've like inspired and it motivated lots of people because they have come to me and said, Javita, I'm so glad to see that you do that. How did you do that? Can you help me do that? And so that's been my biggest motivator right there. Just, you know, when you get the feedback from people, then you know you're doing the right thing. And when I started my Wind Down Wednesdays, that was another motivator because that was my therapy, right? And I was just getting on there. I was like, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to talk about what we want to talk about. And that's it. People are either going to like it or love it. And that's all. And I, don't, I didn't care if they like it or love it. I just needed to say what I needed to say. And in that, I did not realize that not only was I helping myself, I was actually helping other people along the way. Wow. Amazing. All right, uh, Shaquille or Kim, what motivates you? What motivates me? Um, I am a motivator, so <laughs> I've been told that um, when I speak, <laughs> when I walk in the room, I motivate other people. So I guess that, you know, that that's something. Um, but my story is being written. My story has many layers to it. Um, I come from a broken home. Um, but thank God I had grace and mercy, right? But I had two grandparents who cared enough to um, put, build me up, bring me up in, into a world and, and show me things that I never thought I would be able to see. I was that child that said you'll never, that they said that you'll never amount to anything, that you'll never be anything. And so for me, my motivation is just doing, just being. I, I want to be all those things that people thought I never would be. I want to break those generational curses that were hope held on my family. Me. Um, I don't want my kids to know what it feels like to be held down, bounded. You know, I, I don't want that. 
So my goal is to ensure that I do everything possible to live out all my dreams and so that they know that if they want to do something, they can do it. And I'm going to be there to support them. I'm not going to give it to them, <laughs> but I'm going to be there to support them. So my motivation is my past. My motivation is my children, my, my husband, my grandparents. Everything that surrounds me is my motivation, and I, I won't stop. Oh, wow. That is good to hear. All right, Kim Young, Ms. Hutchinson wants to hear from you, too. What motivates you? What motivates me is family. What motivates me is my customers, just people, people motivate me because if I have a customer that calls me and say, I haven't slept, had a good night's sleep in two years. You know what I tell my customer? I have something for you. When a family member comes to me and say, I cannot get this, I can't get the smell out of my house. I have something for you and it's going to work. It's going to fill your room. It's going to make you feel good and it's going to help relax you. I have something for you. So it's people, family, customers that motivate me. Wow. It's amazing. Here we are, right, uh, on this uh, 2022 uh, Black Business Spotlight, and we end up talking about what motivates us and, and because the, the people want to know. And it's just amazing. That's why I was telling you guys in the studio before we came on, yes, we're going to promote your business. Absolutely. That's the main thing. But your story is so important. Um, for years, what I do is I find uh, very successful people and I go and read their stories. Uh, I want to know how they got there. Uh, like the young lady just asked, what motivates you? Um, where do you come from? Does your background look anything like mine? How did you get from a place like I came from to where you are? Those things are really important to me. And I remember many of those stories, just like tonight, the stories that you're telling, uh, many of these people are going to remember. I want to know... Um, what would you uh, tell a person who comes up to you and say, man, uh, Javita, you know, I really want to start um, a, a coaching business like yours. Um, I just don't know how to do it. Kim, oh, my God, could you show me how to make those candles? Uh, uh, Shaquilla, listen, I know you're not going to tell me the whole recipe, but how in the world do you get this catfish filet? Oh, Lord, the catfish filet. How do you get it to taste like that? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, just, I, I don't know what my son, my friend told me about it. But uh, <laughs> I, Shaquille, I'm going to start with you. If someone comes up to you and says, hey, you know, I, I want to start this business. What kind of advice do you give them to kind of, you know, get them to start tracking? I have it happen all the time. And, and one of the things I tell individuals is that. I don't want you to be like me. I don't want you to do what I'm doing. I want you to be better than me. So let's work on you being better than me. Don't ask me um, about, you know, how to do it like me. You know, I want you to change your mindset, uh, mindset. I want you to become all the things that you want to be. And first of all, let's start by saying, let, let's, let's do a plan. You know, I love plans. I love plan A's and I love plan B's. And the reason I do is because if plan A don't work, we go to plan B. And guess what? It doesn't mean that plan A doesn't necessarily work. It just means you've been diverted a little bit, but you keep trying. So my thought process is to have every individual that looks at me, up to me, think about me, wish they could do if you sitting in a corner in your house saying oh my gosh she has the she has it she knows little do you know i'm struggling through it too but i'm gonna figure it out so my thought is just figure it out we can figure it out together and that's what happens when we come together as a community we have to help each other you know i'm not a person to keep all the secrets to myself you know maybe my recipes <laughs> but not all the <laughs> secrets i don't keep the secrets to myself. I love helping people grow. I love sharing with individuals because if they're successful, that means, guess what? I'm going to be successful because now I got something else to look up to because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go get it. Right. Amen to that. Thank you, Shaquille. Kim, if somebody was to come up to you and say, listen, I, you know, I, I want to start this candle business. Not that I want to be your competition per se, but you know, can't, you can't be the only one in Taiwan to selling candles. How would you help them? Not just with the candle per portion of it, but some of this behind the scenes stuff that maybe they wouldn't know. Um, 
the first thing I would tell them is to make sure that that's actually what they want to do. Cause there's a million businesses. You can do anything you want to do. You know, that's just what I chose to do. And when you like, when you go on YouTube or you go on these, on, on the social media platforms, there's videos regarding candles, but they don't have the little secrets, the little, the little tidbits on do it like this. And it won't end up like that. They don't show all of that. So my, my thought, my first thing to a person that wants to start their own business, whether it's a candle business, whatever they want to do, make sure that's what you want to do. Because a lot of times, if it's not a passion, it won't last long. If it's not something you actually want to do, it won't last long at all. It's something you want to do. It's got to be something you love to do. So it can't just, just be for the money. It has to be something that makes you want to get up in the morning and do it. Definitely. Got it. Jovita, what would you say for that person that want to be a get into this coaching business, get into this offer business? <laughs> I would actually say um, write your goals down, write, write what it is that you want to do down and then research, research the industry you want, you know, that you're passionate about and see what's going on. Follow somebody um, who's actually doing exactly what it is that you want to do and invest in yourself. Um, I think highly of investing in yourself, you know, paying the money to really get good coaches to kind of help lead you along the way because you're trying to do this on your own and you don't have to, but you can definitely invest in coaching because that has been a blessing in my life, investing in coaching because there's a lot of things. I'm an engineer, computer engineer by just, I, that's just me. That's my mindset and everything. But, you know, just learning business stuff, you know, I really got coached in that. And that was really one of the biggest investments of, you know, me launching my career. And so I just, I'm a, I love coaching, just coach, find, find yourself a good coach, follow someone who is doing what you want to do. Research, research, research. Don't, I mean, you can dive in, but research along the way, because of course we all want people to do better than us. Cause I want you to do better than me. I want to encourage you to do better than me. I want to help you get to your next level. I want you to like reach that goal, write that book, whatever it is, start that blog, just whatever it is that you want to do. I want to see you get there. I, when you win, I win. Like Shaquilla said, when you win, we all win. When you eat, we all eat. So, right. um, I, I, and I just love helping people that that's just me i ran from it for a while because i was like why am i doing this why do i even want to help people why are people coming to me why and then you know i god said hey this is what you, you're called to do you need to go out here and do it and so i couldn't run from it anymore so just just do it and invest in yourself just really truly invest in yourself the return is phenomenal invest in yourself i like that we have a question from the audience doc crossland asked other than church or this forum, where do you give back to the community? And it's amazing, Doc, because that was a question I was going to ask. Um, not that I'm challenging, you know, whether you're doing it or not, but um, I know that uh, most of us uh, who who do business and stuff like that, we're the type of people who are always trying to help somebody anyway. And um, so anyone can take this question who wants to answer it. How do you specifically give back uh, to the community? I can say for me that I've joined um, other organizations that are community service um, oriented. Um, I am on the board of u for c Victory Ministries, and we help homeless youth and young adults. And our overall mission is to kind of help them get to, from where they are into a better place. So I, I give a lot into that organization. And then with, like I said, other organizations that I am a part of, that's how I give back. So I'm not only doing it in church or this forum, I'm actually involved in other organizations that are community service based. So I, I, I just have a heart to do that. So I have a heart of service. And so that's what I do. And I balance my time and it makes me feel good. It keeps me well-rounded as an individual. That's right. And, and not only for Doc Crossland, but I want the audience to know uh, the business owners that come here, listen, this is not only for them um, to, um, promote their business. We definitely want to do that because we want you to know who they are and we want you to spend some of your money with them. But this is a community service, to be quite honest with you. Uh, Heart for the Community Initiative is all about the community. And you won't know about some of these things unless there's a, 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 a platform for it. 
And maybe some of you never heard of uh, Jovita N. Miller uh, Enterprises. Maybe some of you never heard of uh, Candle Creations. Maybe some of you never heard about uh, Z Southern Kitchen. But now you know. So this is a tremendous thing. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, put this aside saying, that hey, this is no big thing. No, it, it really is a big thing. And Doc Crossland, I'm not saying that you're saying that. But for anybody in the audience who may be thinking that, I want you to know it is a big thing that they hear. We're partnering together. And I love it. So Shaquilla, Kim, uh, how do you uh, give back to the community? I actually um, deal with people less fortunate every day. I interact with them every day. I help get them employed every day. So like I deal with homeless people on a regular basis. I make sure they go out to work every day. Um, that's what I do for the community. And I do it Monday through Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate that. Shaquilla. I'll start off with I had a dream, right? <laughs> no, but honestly, um, as a little girl, I told my parent, grandparents that, you know, when I get big, I want to build this big old house and put it in the middle of the United States and put all the people in it and just feed them. You know, that that was my dream. And so the other day, my husband and I were joking around in the house and um, he said, babe, he said, you know what? He said, this is the first time in a long time that we've been in our house by ourselves. I remember going back, telling my grandfather that dad, you know, me, me and my husband talking to him, we were just tired. You know, we, everybody has an expiration, right? So we were tired and we said, you know what? Why is it that every time we turn around, we have somebody living with us. We've never lived by, by ourselves. We got married at a young age, never lived by ourselves. And my dad said, my, God didn't give you that big old house for you to be by yourself. He gave it to you for, to help other people. That stuck with me. And so because I knew what I wanted to do from a little girl and I heard that message from him that it wasn't given to you, it's not yours. You know, it's not yours alone, it's for you to share. So now, anybody that knows me know i give my all to any and everybody i don't wait for the church i don't wait for the the, the community um to do anything i don't wait for the organ many organizations that i am in i don't wait for anybody when i feel like i want to do and i want to give i do it and it's always out the blue you, as you know, my daughter's just um, last year, I think it was, filled a 52-foot semi-truck up with supplies. And we went, sent that to Texas. We flew to Texas. We gave out supplies. My daughters right now are doing initiatives in Greensboro, giving back. They're on their way to mission trips, one to Honduras and one to Ghana. So through me, watching me do all of that all the time, I feed people. I, I, I support people. I I spend money that I don't even have on people. I give them money I don't have, you know? But for me, I think that giving doesn't really come monetarily or materialistic. Giving yourself, sometimes people just need you. They need to be able to listen to you. They need to be able to say, you know what? I just need somebody to talk to. So for me, I, I don't worry about how I give, when I give, why I give, I just give. Hey, Amen. I appreciate that. Listen, we're about to wrap, but before we wrap, I want to give you all an opportunity. Uh, there may be something that you wanted to say to the audience. Maybe I just wasn't smart enough to bring it out, but here's your opportunity. And if there's anything else that you want the audience to know about your business, I want you to do that. We're going to go uh, to Jovita first, then Kim, and then Shaquilla. So Javita, maybe anything that you wanted to let the, the audience know that maybe we didn't cover or something else you want them to know about your business? Um, well, I am um, working on this um, class, a master class for writers and um, it will be, I'll be launching it in probably the next couple of months or so. So be on the lookout for that. It's just to be a writer's workshop and it's just to help you go ahead and get started in your writing journey to create your book. And hopefully by the, you know, the goal is that you'll have like, you know, what your book is going to be about and at least some titles um, at the end of that masterclass. Cause we just want you to start thinking and brainstorming for those who would like to start writing. 
Um, also, I want people to know that not only am I um, did I author the book In Between the Sheets, I also authored the book um, Sister in Arms. I'm a co-author in this book, and you can learn a lot about my story in my chapter. My chapter is chapter four in this book. You'll learn a little bit more about my journey and what I went through, especially as being a single mom um, at you know at an early age and stuff. So you'll learn a little bit more about me there, but. My last thing I want to say is I am also launching a, my Permission to be Free Academy. It'll be online and that should be coming out, I would say, in the next few weeks. And I'm excited about it because now I can put my courses out there so people can actually get to them. And it's self-paced. You can work at your own pace and stuff like that. But I am just grateful and I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to kind of just share my story a little bit and to just share my experience along the way. Thank you, Jovita. It has been a pleasure to have you back for the 2022 Black Business Spotlight. Really appreciate it. Kim. Um, I uh, just basically wanted to say that um, I have excellent products. If you have an issues with sleeping, if you have issues with an odor in your home, um, I have something for you. I have something that gets rid of headaches i have something for you it's not just a smell good fragrance it's for health so if you need anything definitely give me a call uh, i have a call or you can um, look me up on instagram or facebook and i will definitely treat you as a real customer i'll listen to you and i will create what you need me to create thank you kim we appreciate that candle creations all right, with the K now, not candle yes. with the C. That's right. The K's and those K's for that K and Kim. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Shaquilla. <laughs> Definitely. First, um, and I, 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 I need to say I should have did this in the beginning, but I want to give honor to God who first gave me the strength and the ability to do everything that I'm doing because truly by his grace and mercy, I am here. Um, and I want to say that, you know, for me and my business and everything that I have going on, I want everyone to know that I want to feel comfortable coming to me, not just for my food, but for the conversation, for the family feel, for getting to know us, you know, knowing who Shaquilla and Taryn Hutchison is, what we're about, what we do, what we stand for. I want to say that I want you to enjoy my food at the utmost. I want you to come in and taste. I want everybody to understand what we're doing. Um, my food truck will open up March 26th. Um, we'll be, that'll be our first day out. Location will be at the our um, brick and motor at um, 1169 Courthouse Road in Stafford. We're not sure when the brick and mortar is going to open just yet because we're doing that during, um, during that construction phase, right? So waiting on permits and all the other stuff. But I do want you to come out, enjoy the food. We have catfish, we have fried shrimp, we have whiting, we have collard greens, macaroni and cheese. Um, you are the first to know. We will be known for this year. Um, I want everybody to get excited mix to start feeling it, and I want you to taste what I got. All right, now listen now. Now, I, I'm going to tell y'all, now that catfish, now listen, chicken wings, bomb, all the other stuff she was talking about, but that catfish, if you are not careful, it'll make you think crazy. Right? You know, something so good, it just make you start thinking crazy. That's how good the catfish is. I'm not sure what she's doing to it. I don't know what she's doing. But every time me and my wife get that catfish, we, we got to go sit down and drink cold water, just get ourselves together. That thing is real. <laughs> Shaquilla, we appreciate you. Jovita, we appreciate you. Kim, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a part of a Heart for the Community Initiatives 2022 Black Business Spotlight. I want to say a very special thank you to Apostle Larry G. Brown Sr. He is the president and visionary for Heart for the Community Initiative uh, through his leadership, uh, guidance, and uh, you know the affirmative head nod. We're able to do all these things. He's a tremendous leader. Uh, we do appreciate it. Let me tell you something. Uh, back in January 2017, when we were up in the Word of Faith uh, with Apostle Dwayne Coates talking about this, 
we had no idea the heart for the community would be able to serve the community in this capacity. We just followed the leading of the Lord and uh, look at where we are. So we do thank God for you. Uh, and we pray that all things go well. You business owners, uh, we pray that uh, going from here, uh, that your businesses will flourish. We pray for your safety and your well-being. And there's anything that Heart for the Community uh, can do for you, please let us know. Our door is open to you as we continue to partner together uh, for your business, uh, our business, and the, the betterment of our community. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate you. Thank you. Audience. Thank you. Can I audience? just say one more thing? Sure, absolutely. I just, I wanted to say thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to use this platform. Um, just thank you and God bless you. Amen. We appreciate it. Well, audience, listen, if this was good to you, then let it bless someone else too. Please make sure that you share it. Now, remember, we're going to be back tomorrow evening, February 20th, Sunday at 7 p.m. We've got three more business owners lined up for you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look at my calendar so I can tell you I was supposed to have this lined up, but I got so excited with these ladies. I just forgot all about it. So tomorrow night, we're going to have Jamia Jones with Provision LLC. We're going to have Crystal King with the with the uh, gaming uh, truck. And we're going to have Linnea Jordan of Jordan Production. She's a playwright. She's an author. She's a, a movie producer, all that kind of good stuff. So we got another great lineup coming for you tomorrow night. Make sure you tell somebody, tag somebody, and make sure you share. We'll see you tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. back for Heart for Community Initiatives 2022 Black Business Spotlight. Until then, May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you.